OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find the sum of all of the factors of this number 27,720. So that's all of the divisors, all of the positive integers which go into this number, including itself. So one way of approaching this problem would just be to find all of the factors and add them all up. But this would take a really long time, so we'll take a more nuanced approach. The key idea behind this approach, which could actually be generalised to any positive integer, is that we split this number up not into all of its factors, but all of its prime factors then the idea is that your factors are made up by multiplying together your prime factors, and we'll take a combinatorial approach from there. So we do need the prime factorization. So just to start off, 27,720, you can see that 10 goes into this number, so we can write it as 2 times 5 times 2772. Then we can see that 2 will go into this number, so we can take out another factor of 2, 2 squared times 5 times 1, 3, 8, 6. This is still even, so we can take out another factor of 2, so 2 cubed times 5, and when we divide this by 2, we'll get 693, which you can see is then going to be a multiple of 3. The sum of digits is a multiple of 3. So when we divide this by 3, we'll get 231, which is also a multiple of 3. So we get 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5 times so 231 divided by 3 gives us 77 which is just going to be 7 times 11. So then we've got this number expressed as a product of its prime factors. And we'll, if we use the prime factors to now find all of the factors, if we list the factors in a certain way, it will reveal some really interesting underlying structure. So how will we list our factors of this number? Well, we could start off with those which are only made up of 2s, so they don't contain any powers of 3, 5, 7, or 11. So all you would have is, if we include 1, you'd have 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared, and you also have 2 cubed. And you can't include any higher powers of 2, because then that wouldn't divide into 27,720. So this is all of our factors which are only made up of 2s. And if we look at those which are only made up of 2s and 3s, so they don't contain any 5s, 7s, or 11s, we can include these. But then you'll also have those which have a 3, so you'll have 3 and 2 times 3, you'll have 2 squared times 3, and you also have 2 cubed times 3. But then 3 squared goes into this number, so we can also include 3 squared. So you'll have 3 squared plus 2 times 3 squared plus 2 squared times 3 squared, and finally 2 cubed times 3 squared. Then we can't include any higher powers of 2 or 3, because then they won't be factors of our number. So if we were to add all of these together, there's some really nice structure here, because it's essentially the same thing, 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed, but then the second time we do the sum, it's all multiplied by 3, then it's all multiplied by 3 squared. So actually, this is all, we could factorise this, it's all equal to 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed. First of all, just multiplied by 1 for this first row, then for the second row, plus 3, and for the third row, plus 3 squared. So if you were to expand the bracket, in a certain order, you would get exactly the same sum here. So this is all of those which just contain 2s and 3s. Then if we further include the 5s, you'll keep all of these factors. So we'd have this sum so far. But then you'd also have to include all of these terms again multiplied by 5. There's only one power of 5 in our number, so we'd only need to include this much. So those just containing 2, 3, and 5, not containing 7 or 11, you'd say that the sum of these factors 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed, then we multiply by 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared, and finally multiply by 1 plus 5. Then if we also want to include all the factors which contain a 7, we can keep all of these factors and their sum, but then we'd also have all of these factors times 7. So to get this, we'd have all of these times 1 plus all of these times 7. And then similarly for 11, we multiply by 1 plus 11. So now we've taken a problem which seemed like a really big sum into actually some relatively small additions and some multiplication. So let's evaluate the sum now. We get 15 here from our sum of powers of 2, times 13 from our sum of powers of 3, times 6, times 8, times 12. So 15 times 13, we get 195, times 6 times 8 is 48, and we multiply this by 12. So I'll spare some of the details here, but we could still do this by hand even. 195 times 48, this will give us 9360 times 12. Then our final answer is going to be 112320. So this is our sum of all of our factors then of 27,720. 
So now we'll have a look at how to generalise this method to any positive integer. So imagine we've got some integer and this is its prime factorization, p1 to the k1, that's p2 to the k2 and so on. We can find the sum of all of the factors of our number just by breaking this up once again. So we can start off by finding the sum of all factors which are only made up using the first prime p1. So we can write 1 plus p1 plus p1 squared and so on all the way up until we've got p1 to its highest possible power is going to be k1. Then if you want to include all of the factors which are made up using p1 and p2, we keep all of these so we can multiply this sum by 1. Then we also want the sum of all the terms here times p2, and similarly we want the sum of all of these terms times p2 squared, and so on, all the way up to our highest power of p2 is k2. Then if we want to include p3, we'll have 1 plus p3, so on, all the way up to p3 to the power of k3. And we've got to keep going through all of our primes until we get to our final prime pn, which will give us a contribution there of 1 plus pn, and so on, all the way up to pn's highest power of kn. So we can write this expression much more compactly using product notation. We'll write this, let's say, the product from i equals 1 to n of 1 plus, it's now pi plus pi squared, and so on, the sum of all of our powers of pi up to pi's highest power, which we'll write as ki. And even the sum we can evaluate, because this is just a geometric series. So using the formula for the sum of a geometric series, let's say we've got 1 plus r plus r squared and so on, up to r to some power m. The formula tells us this is going to be r to the m plus 1 minus 1 divided by r minus 1. So we can write our final expression. We get a really nice formula for the sum of factors of our numbers. The product from i equals 1 to n of pi to the power of it's ki all plus 1 minus 1 divided by pi minus 1.